Hello, YouTube. How are you doing? Yes, it's another Dwarf Fortress episode where I'm half cut and therefore probably will end up just rambling along. Rambling and rambling on. Oh, no, there's a good recommendation for a film. Uh, New Zealand horror movie, Black Sheep. Definitely worth a watch. Give that a crack. In fact, there's a lot of decent movies coming out of Black Sheep. There was one with the guy from Once Were Warriors where him and his wife were cannibals or something and they were eating people who were in their house. And there was another one with a guy who lived in the walls. And there was another one with a death metal band. Uh, there are lots of good New Zealand horror movies. I feel like Peter Jackson may have... Uh, invigorated the New Zealand film industry somewhat with his uh, with his presence. Hmm. Anyway, enough of this. It's time to put on some swirler and start doing a little bit of dwarf fortressing. Yeah? Sound good? Now, my plans prior to the break were mainly revolving around getting uniforms and gear for my military dwarves and sorting out the clothing stockpiles. So, up we go to here. Uh, where I think what I'm going to do is ooh, pop down some stockpiles for clothing that can only take from my clothes makers workshops. That makes sense, doesn't it? And then what I'm going to do is leave the leather shoe shop alone. Where are the clothes shops? There we go. There are the clothiers shops. It's hard to tell what's a workshop and what's not with all this tap line on the floor. Anyway, socks, cloth blags, trousers, and dresses. Okay, I mean, what else do we want? I, I presume we want shirts. Actually, let's not get too crazy. Let's start by making uh, some leather armor for people to wear while they train. Um, do they necessarily need to wear a piece of chest armor? I think we established that they could all just wear a leather cap and it would train their armor use just as effectively. Then again, let's let's get leather armor made, right? Bit of leather armor, never did anyone any harm, uh, and we'll get it down in the barracks. So I'll make the stockpile first, down here. Uh, P for stockpiles, uh, D for armor. Yeah. Uh, and then we need to make a, a 10 square stockpile, which I shall do here. Two, three, four, five. Yep. Two, 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 two. There we go. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to set the settings to say no bins, so lowercase c. Uh, and then I'm going to go in and say I want only body armor, no metal, and strictly leather, which is there. There we go. Uh, and in there, we don't want anything that isn't artifact, excuse me, or a masterwork. Likewise for that. Oh, nope. There we go. Good. So what we should end up with in there is 10 masterwork pieces of leather armor. However, what about the chod that we create? The tat, the rubbish, the poor quality stuff. I think what we need to do there is have that go straight to a trading depot. Is that a thing? Hmm. Oh yeah, Black Sheep was fantastic. Very much uh, in the tradition of Bad Taste, uh, Meet the Feebles and uh, Brain Dead. Very much. Uh, okay, what do I do? What do I do to get these armour things made? Um, see, I can't put an order in to keep ten in stock, because if they've got ten shit ones, they'll stop making stuff. Then again, we've had a guy making shoes for quite some time, so maybe he's got a bit of skill and he's banging out good shit anyway. Actually, this is just training armor, isn't it? Let's just make ten... It doesn't have to be masterwork. Ten pieces of armor, gonna be fine. So, leather armor, fantastic. Alt W, yes please, make it a repeater. Shift A, enter for leather. Uh, and then we want five... No, we want ten to eleven of these now. Because... We want them to definitely have 10. There we go. So 10 to 11 pieces of armour should end up in our depot, in our barracks rather, nice and quickly. And uh, we can get our guys wearing it as a uniform to train, which should put their armour wearing skill up. We'll see. We shall see. You can acquire wooden training armour, but you have to get it from the elves. You can't actually make it yourself, I don't think. Maybe you could. 
I mean, you could decorate it with wood. Oh, you can't though, can you? The only thing you can do with armour is stud it. You can stud it with metals and that's about as far as it goes. Which is a shame, because I really wanted to make a suit of uh, colour-coded gem-encrusted armour for a Power Rangers-style squadron. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be. It was just not to be. Oh well. So, guys, are you bringing any trade stuff down? Are you bringing any armour down yet? I don't think the guy who's going to make it has actually made his way to the workshop yet. We've still got a little while to wait before the armour starts coming through, but that's okay. I mean, maybe I should get them training in the copper armour. Maybe that's good enough for training. I do want to start like making better stuff. I mean, maybe we should start looking for the uh, adamantine. I mean, that is that is something that we could start looking for, isn't it? Hmm. Do I already have um, mining stairs? No. I've breached the first cavern, but that's from way outside the fortress. What I could do is dig another tunnel off over here to go mining in. And again, part of me feels like, go deeper here, do a break off tunnel down here, and then go mining via that. Hmm. Oh wait, I've still got stairs designated from the, oh, DX. Let's get rid of those. Don't need any unwanted designations flopping around everywhere. That's uh, not ideal. Hello, Baron Tome. Welcome back. Copper bins. Does the same training count? At least it would be useful for trading to elves. We've got copper bins already. Uh, I have been making those. Oh, is that is that in this fortress? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, we have got copper bins, I think, that we can use for trading with elves. But to be honest, as long as you don't try to sell them the wooden bins, they're fine with it. You can uh, you can take wooden bins up to the trade depot, take all the stuff out, but the second you try and trade wooden stuff with them, they get very eggy. They get very upset. Uh, train them in barrels to maximise the dodge and roll effect. Oh. Train, with, train them in the light stuff, they'll perform more actions. Okay. Uh, well, we'll get the armour made. We'll get the leather armour made and then we'll train them. In a leather uniform. Because uh, the copper really was only to get the skills of our armour smith up. But now we've got it. We may as well move it somewhere else, right? It's not vital. It's not really going to get used. I'm about to go and start finding uh, out where Adamantine is. That's my current goal. Uh, maybe... Do I dig off from here to get the... Yeah, what I'm going to do... It may seem crazy, but it's not, trust me. I'm going to dig off of here, on the other side of this stairwell, okay? There we go, like that. Then, I'm going to dig over... Oh shit. There we go. Dig over here, like this. I'm going to come down here, Ooh, just clip past the volcano, and then I'm going to say I for up downstairs. Oh, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to say downstairs on this floor. Uh, where is downstairs? J. There we go. Bonk, da donk, donk, diddly donk. And then we go up downstairs. There, and go down two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And hopefully that won't breach any sort of cavern. I don't think it does. Looks like we're okay, right? Although this unexposed cavern area here is a little bit concerning. We'll see though, we'll see. What I actually should do, let me just say DX. Let's cut that off there so the stairs are already designated. We're getting to dig this and we'll also put some trappage in, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? Make a... a Big old trap corridor here, put some traps in around here. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Uh, my first squad, some of them have made it to Discipline 4, but the armor use only half. Armor use is only half a level. Shield use and weapon use is going up okay, but armor seems to take ages. That could be... Are you wearing metal? Are they wearing metal or are they wearing leather? Oh my god, spinning and racing. I've done that one. <laughs> horrible, horrible party game. 
What maniac invented that one? <laughs> Someone who was full of booze, probably. Uh, they're in full leather plus iron helm, wood shield and iron spears. Well, that shouldn't be too bad. Maybe it takes a lot. Maybe it just takes a long time to do the training. I'm, I've never really got to grips with the military in Dwarf Fortress. It's always been uh, a bit opaque to me. Oh, for a second there, I thought we were about to plough into the volcano and flood the fortress, but it looks okay. It looks fine. Nearly knocked my drink over. I think we're going to be safe. I think we're going to survive. I'm going to have to put some doors in as soon as they've dug past those posts. But we should be okay. We should be okay. I suppose I could put a drawbridge in as well, couldn't I? I could do a drawbridge around here, traps here, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking just a basic array of cage traps, but preceded from the perspective of someone coming up from the caverns by a shitload of weapon traps. You can do weapon can you do weapon traps on a lever so they will affect forgotten beasts? Because I'm slightly concerned we might accidentally breach a cavern here, but we'll give it a go, we'll give it a go. We'll see how it pans out. I should probably build that bridge before it even gets too far, so B G for a bridge. Um I would like that bridge to be Ah you you bastard. There we go. I can put it there, and I don't want it retracting, I want it raising that way. Brilliant. There we go. And we'll make it out of... What should I make it out of? Some kind of blocks, I presume. Can we make it out of green glass blocks? Have I got green glass blocks knocking around? Um... Yeah! Well, hey, look at that. Loads of green glass blocks. As you would expect. The main benefit of constructing bridges out of green glass blocks is they conceal the vomit pretty well, make it hard to spot. It's good. It's good. That's one of the things you want in a Dwarf Fortress Fort. Easily wipe clean surfaces and colours that don't sort of show the vomit too much. Potentially, like basically a vomit patterned wallpaper or carpet would be good, you know? Hide the sick as best you can. Have we only got one miner left now? That's not ideal. I genuinely thought we had more than one miner. Uh, I'm going to build some doors uh, in planning mode here and here. There we go, that should be fine. And then while that's digging, we're going to go over to a therapist and take a little goosey gander, a little glance to see how many miners I've got left. Well, there should be shitloads. Look at that. There's loads of miners in the fortress. So why do they not pick up their picks and get mining? One of them's preoccupied with bone carving, probably. Fish cleaning. Bah. Disable. Furnace operating and architecture. Good lord. Architecture? Making buildings? How bland. How tedious. Okay, once he's moved off of that square, we can start building more doors. That'll be great. Is anyone going to come here and do the mechanicking or the uh, architecting? It would be great if you did. Build door. Uh, it's already in planning mode. There and there. That's good. It's not for want of idlers, obviously, because look, we've got 13 of the bastards here. In fact, now we've got 13, I feel like maybe I should turn my eye to the Briolite stockpile. Oh, wait. Okay. Uh, it looks like we may have achieved full Rhyolite repatriation. Oh, I like this. Where's... Oh, hang on, no, that's, that's Rhyolite, isn't it? No, oh, that's Schist. Oh my goodness, we appear to have moved all of the Rhyolite out of the problem zones. Oh, heavens above Druid's Mead. Gave me the fright of my life. There we go, back to Dwarf Fortress. Oh, thank you very much. Hiding vomit sounds like an OSHA violation. You reckon? Maybe. I feel like if you're preparing food in the area, sure. Definitely. But in other areas? Ah, nightclub carpeting? Ah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Hmm. There's somebody in the leatherworks. Presumably making the armour, I would guess. That's good to see. Okay, so I'm guessing we've got all the rhyolite. That's very nice. So we can go to where the Rhyolite stockpile is here and say DBD 
I'd like you to dump all this rhyolite into my lovely quantum stockpile. And then once we've done that, we can go to the stock screen. Nope. Yep, there we go. Find the wheelbarrows. Uh, say Control N to get rid of anything with no tags. And then we have to do the... Oh, God. <laughs> the Fs and Ds. First, we'll do the, the jobs... The ones that are in jobs, we can do those. Because if we do those first, we can remove everything, right? Everything in a job will be removed and then easy peasy. Why is this one coming up? Oh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Don't panic. Everybody settle down. Remain calm. Cool your bloody jets. Uh, there we go. Good, good. So control J. Bonk. And then I need to come down and do all the Fs. D, F, D, 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 F, D, F, F, D, F, D, F, D, F, D, F, D, F, D, 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 F, D, 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 F, D, F, D, 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 we can start moving another type of stone. I'm thinking Alanite, just because there's so much on this floor, and it would be nice. Oh, there's also Quartzite. Ass. Do I do the Quartzite first or the Alanite? I'm going to do Alanite first because there's a bit more of it, and hopefully, hopefully they'll gather it up in larger quantities. I don't think there'll be quite as much as there is Rhyolite, though. I think it's good. Uh, it would be a slip hazard. Oh. It's all right, George. Me, don't worry. No need to worry about it. It, it. You pooped appropriately. Although we do have a channel point command. Uh, yeah, that's. I think it's only a hundred points or something, and it will automatically. Look, let me. Let me. Someone can try it out if they want. Anyone want to try it out? It should take us back. And if you do it when there you go. If you do it when they we're not in dwarf therapist. There you go. It says I'm not in dwarf therapist right now. Da, 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 da. It's very good. Easy way to use a hundred points. That's all I have to say. And because you all use that in good faith, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna graciously take all of your channel points. Here we go. Uh, Dwarf therapist, Ravelin, Sal, Druid's Mead, and Wirus. All of you got to use a hundred points there. Amazing. It's very good. It does make things a little bit easier when I forget about it. It just goes. Oh, <laughs> confusing. <laughs> Very confusing. Highlight my message. I'm not in Dwarf Therapist right now. Oh my god. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, they're moving all the Rhyolite. That's very good. Let's go and check to see how that tunnel digging is progressing. Oh, it's progressed fully. Uh, let's put in some doors. Build doors. Uh, we've got planning mode on already. We're going to pop doors in there, and there, and there, and there. And then we're going to say uh, trap, cage trap. There we go. And I would like to pop nine cage traps in here. Seems like a good enough place, doesn't it? There we go. Bang. Quartzite mechanisms, sure. Put one there. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, there we go. Nine cage traps. Very exciting. So next, I'm going to want weapon traps. Bonk. Gadonk. Actually, do I want it there or down? I'm going to put the weapons traps in here, I think. Yeah, there. Okay. So Rhyolite mechanisms, serrated green glass discs. Lovely. And then how do we say done? D. Very good. So, put one there. Put it on Rhyolite mechanisms. Large serrated green glass discs. Done. Weapon trap. Place. Rhyolite mechanisms. Large serrated green glass discs. Done. We're getting there. We're going to do it. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Uh, serrated green glass discs. Done. And we put another weapon trap in here. Mechanism. Green glass discs. Done. Uh, w on there. Mechanism. Green glass discs. Done. I am putting ten in each of these, aren't I? Or am I being an idiot? 
Enter the quartzite mechanism, large serrated green glass discs, 31, done, and then pop one there, Bosch, Bosch, uh, done, and then one more, done, done, and done, lovely, good. So that should work quite well for repelling opponents. Wait, what, what? No, 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 D, capital T, W capital T, B, capital T, W, there we go, there's the weapon trap, in there, bang, large serrated green glass discs, done, excellent, okay, I've missed one there, but it's in, it's in now, it'll be fine, uh, still nobody working on here, what's the, what's the requirement, <clears throat> needs masonry, I'm pretty sure we've got masons knocking around, that shouldn't be a problem, hmm, hmm, I enjoy that I have the option for 900 channel points to change your grayscale demotes to grayscale. Is that a thing? I didn't realise. I suppose you could make the... Uh... <laughs> if you put an eye patch on the Triangle of Trouble there... Oh no, sunglasses. Very different. The black background makes the sunglasses hard to see. The white, the grey and the black place. That's right. That's very correct. That is exactly what's happening here. Pink, brown, black, gone. It's all about grayscale now, baby. Okay. Looks like a mason is yet to come forth to build this bridge, which is a problem. It's interesting that they're sending a mason down to build it, even though it's made of glass. I mean, I suppose glass could be misconstrued as a kind of stone at some level of analysis. But also, it feels like a bit of a weird thing for it to be considered. And again, obsidian is glass, isn't it? Which is also a stone, so... Maybe glass is just a man-made form of stone. It doesn't even have to be man-made, does it? It could be uh, like trinitite, the nuclear glass, or... Um, I'm sure glass is made in other ways. Lightning strikes on beaches make glass, don't they? And obsidian, of course, the, the well-known black glass of volcanoes. <laughs> uh, I'm almost always thinking like that. I was watching uh, a documentary that Kel was watching. I was, I was walking in and out of the room while I was setting my PC up. And she was watching a documentary about Dennis Nilsson because she wants to uh, watch the, the two-part uh, drama series they've done about his uh, capture and uh, confession with um, David Tennant playing Dennis Nilsson. And... Uh, why was I talking about that? Oh yes, uh, I, I was often stopping for a little wry giggle going, oh, isn't the world terrible? <laughs> Perfect material for the dark place. Terrible man. Terrible man. Seems to be quite well acted by David Tennant, though. Seems like he has somewhat of a an affinity for the character, which could be concerning. Could be very concerning. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't do any murders. That would be ideal. That would be the best outcome. No murders, please. Oh, it has to save just as I run out of things to talk about, doesn't it? Bloody game. It's like it's waiting. It's like it can see into my brain. It goes, he's running dry. He's running dry. Time to save. Time to save now. That's it. Make him fester. Make him flounder. That's it. Make sure he's got nothing to save for a good few minutes. That'll really help him. Come on, game. Give me something to react to, even though I've barely reacted to you all night and I've just sat here chatting away with the people in chat. As I am allowed to do, tis my right. Tis my right. I should prepare like things to talk about, shouldn't I? I should really think about streaming on more than a technical level sometime when I'm not streaming, shouldn't I? I should probably not drink <laughs> while I'm streaming. That will probably almost certainly improve the quality. I feel like when I've had my best streams, I've either had a little bit too much to drink or nothing to drink. Never in the middle. Never in the middle. I'm banging through that a bit quickly, though. I might have to put that to one side. I don't want to, I don't want to end up actually plastered. That would be a bit shit. I don't think anyone would enjoy watching me sitting here going... Because, you know, it's just not fun. It's just not exciting. 
There are so many horror movies. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit... Uh, having trouble coming up with a specific horror movie. You know what horror movie I found vastly underimpressing or underwhelming? The Exorcist. People told me that was the most terrifying film they'd ever seen. And I thought it was about as scary as a pair of old socks. There's nothing frightening about it at all. Then again, if you sort of couch your horror overtly in Christian mythology, I'm unlikely to be moved by it. I'm not uh, what you would call susceptible to religious horror. Anything with like creepy nuns and stuff like that. To be fair, you can have stuff with creepy nuns in that is scary and creepy priests, but it's usually not pitched as horror. It's more often than not a documentary. Uh, what have we got here? Dingo Dong still having his... Oh, he's depressed. Oh, Dingo Dong. Did you really have to get so unhappy? Is there nothing we could have done about this that didn't result in you being obliterated by a falling bridge? No? No, oh, well, never mind. Uh, I also don't see the love for The Exorcist, but it might also have been a product of its time. You know, I did enjoy the Omen movies, which were from the same period. They were good, but actually not scary. That's the thing. They got a few like little shocks in. The bit where... Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, he's a great horror actor. He's in loads of really good stuff. David uh, Warner. David Warner gets his head cut off by a piece, a sheet of glass in one of the Omen movies. That's pretty good. Uh, actually, no. Does he get take? Does he get cut in half in an elevator? No, I think he gets his head cut off by glass. Let me just have a quick Google of this. Let me just check to see if I'm uh, imagining things. Uh, well. Okay, whatever. Uh, Google. David Warner. Uh, Omen Death. There we go. It's also got the second Doctor uh, from Doctor Who. He gets killed uh, by a falling lightning conductor. It was him. It was him. He did get his head cut off with a sheet of glass. Classic actor, David Warner. Man, if I had my way and I got to make the horror movie I always wanted to make, he'd be in the cast. But unfortunately, that cast is now d diminishing in likelihood. M many of them have passed on beyond the veil of death. Has anyone seen The Kingdom, the Danish movie? I have the TV series. Is that what you mean? The, the Danish TV series where the guy gets stretched out really thin and flat? I think I've got it on DVD, but I'm not sure I've actually sat through and watched it all the way through. Hmm. Hmm. Also, similar period, Weirus, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that's a, got a genuine atmosphere to it. So that's a bit um, bit of a creeper. Not terrifying, again, but it's spookier than The Exorcist, for damn sure. I didn't find The Exorcist frightening at all. But highly implausible is what I found it. Um, anyway, where were we? Well, there was an, it's an adaptation of a Stephen King, isn't it? It's an adaptation of a Stephen King story. And um, there was also an American... Is it? Though? It's, no, it's not Stephen... Is it? I can't remember. I can't remember, but I do remember it. I remember the guy standing on the roof going, Bluderdansk! And getting all upset about Danish people. I like both the original and remake for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I didn't mind the remake, actually. I forgot entirely that happened, but yeah. There's that great shot in it where the, um, somebody's been shot in the head and you've got like the whole face and the back of the head's been blown through and the camera pulls all the way through the wound and through the car, if I remember. That was a good one. Good movie. Good movie. Mind you, I mean, I am... Um, other way around... What, the Stephen King? The Stephen King wrote a book based on the Danish movie? Question mark? Hmm. Hmm. I really enjoyed the TV series Hannibal. Now that was that was uh, spectacularly good looking. Very well worth a watch if you like uh, looking at stuff. I know we've had people in chat uh, not so fond of it, but uh, personally I thought it looked really good. Actually, no, was that someone was I on another stream? Did I mention Hannibal in another stream and someone poo-pooed it? Maybe. 
Maybe, I'm not sure. Oh, it was. Yeah, it was another stream. It wasn't here, don't worry. <laughs> Nobody's mentioned Hannibal here before. Stephen King stole it. Oh. Why would Stephen King need to steal any stories? The man's like a fucking word fountain. Constantly pissing out novels. I mean, yeah, the quality varies somewhat from time to time, but they're generally pretty good. I really enjoyed um, that one, that TV series they did recently based on his uh, time travel thing about the JFK assassination. Do you remember that? Had, uh, what's his name, Franco in it. Not the dictator. Um, he wrote the movie script based on the Danish miniseries. Oh, interesting. I didn't realise that. Yeah, uh, what was the name? It was the name of the TV series I'm talking about. It's just like a date, the date of um, JFK's assassination. But that was quite good fun. I enjoyed that. You know what? Stephen King has written quite a few books that I have enjoyed a lot. What is this? Why have we got so much clothing here? Is there a is there a dump? Have I put a dump here? I think I have, haven't I? God damn it, there's a garbage dump. They're probably taking the rhyolite down there right now. Oh, Christ. Uh, let's remove that dump area. Let's do it. Bang, done, removed. No more zone. Start dumping all that shit. D, B, C. Yeah, let's reclaim all that crap there. Let's also reclaim some of this crap. Why is that forbidden? Why are these things forbidden over here as well? Weird. Okay. There we go. It's all good. Put himself in the movie. I never. I don't think I've seen the movie. I think I've only seen the TV series. Maybe. Hmm. Have to look into it. I remember quite liking the uh, the TV series. People have been telling me to watch Dark. I am tempted, but it's like one of those ones where there's got like three seasons now, and I think that's all there's going to be. But it's like a kind of a daunting thing to start with. I mean, me and Kel are taking forever to get through Lock and Key. I've been enjoying that. That's not too bad. Although it does feel maybe pitched a little bit more at younger uh, viewers. Like, not... I mean, like teenagers, not kids. Ah, a Cuman caravan from Behel Mathras has arrived. Very nice. Welcome to the fortress, dear sirs. Do you have anything interesting to trade? <laughs> Pardon me, fucking hell. Madness. Oh, Stephen King's been in loads of movies. Uh, do you remember him... Um, is he in the new hit? What, the first one or the second one? Do you remember when he was in... Um, he did tried to do actual proper acting in Creepshow. That was a mistake. <laughs> that was a mistake. He's definitely a writer. I wouldn't really call him <laughs> an actor. Okay, trade items have been dispatched. This is good. This is very good. Um, I might be able to get those dirty clothes that I just unforbade into the trade depot. If I just make that uh, an auto trade zone. Oh, hang on a minute. There's loads of people prattling around. They're grabbing stone left, right and centre to move it. Why? Oh, they're moving rhyolite. Okay. Turns out there was a shitload of rhyolite in that stockpile. Hmm. Intriguing. Have I made my run for the candy yet? I have not. I have not. But I was kind of... Ah! Oh, someone's built the... This is good. Okay, let's build a, a, a lever. Build trap component lever. I'm going to put the lever for this one, perhaps stupidly, near the actual thing. There we go. Let's do that. Once that's been built, we'll link it up to the bridge. And you know what? They're already putting in the cage traps. Let's start the digging. Let's just start the digging. What, as they say in the great book of famous last words, is the worst thing that could happen? Hmm? Hmm. Chapter one where he runs to the pawn shop and sells the bicycle back. Huh. Oh, I have really been considering doing a... Um, a rewatch of all of John Carpenter's movies. If I can like get a a good copy of everything, I think I might sit down and actually watch them all at once more. And but maybe stop after In the Mouth of Madness. 
I'm not sure I want to watch Vampires or Ghosts of Mars again. But I think I could go for everything else because I forgot about loads of them. Like, um, Christine. I, um, one of the, you know that channel I recommend, the um, Horror Timelines channel? He started doing this thing called Dead Last where him and a load of other horror movie got buffs. Um, they take a franchise of movies or like adaptations of a particular author and they rank them and they take all of the things that have been made and they rank them from best to worst and their last one they did was all the um, the Stephen King adaptations from pre-2000 so all the 90s and 80s adaptations and uh, I forgot like like John Carpenter and uh, a load of really famous directors made horror directors made um, Stephen King movies that were absolute dog dirt <laughs> it's unbelievable how bad some of them were. Um, the worst that could happen? The elves are accidentally traded something with random oaken ornaments. Ah, I mean, that's, that's mildly bad. I mean, let's face it, anything that upsets the elves can't be that bad, can it? Can it? You would stop at Escape from L.A. What, what was after... Yeah, no, Escape from L.A. is not the best. Um, but... What was after that? Would that just mean no Escape from LA, no Ghosts of Mars, and no Vampires? Because part of me feels like maybe I should watch the last, the bad ones, just to make the other ones look even better. You know? Maybe I should do that. What? He made the remake of Village of the Damned? I've never even seen that. I didn't know it was him. Oh, maybe I should watch all of them. Maybe I should. Maybe I should make my uh, girlfriend watch all the John Carpenter films for my birthday. Maybe that would be it. Vampires. I I remember like I don't remember much about the movies, but I remember renting. Well, I remember getting Ghosts of Mars and Vampires when I worked in a in a video store. I remember watching them both, and um, just as I was like right at the peak of my John Carpenter appreciation phase that like I just watched uh, Escape from Precinct 13 and um, uh, um, They Live and all that and uh, I watched those two movies and Jesus Christ absolute dog dirt I, I, I don't know I feel if I feel like John Carpenter was never quite given the the credit he deserved when he was making movies right he, he, um, he got he made some real genuine masterpieces, some classics, but never really got sort of offered like big movies to direct. Everything was always kind of, I mean, Big Trouble in Little China is the closest thing he did to like a big mainstream movie, maybe. Other people, you may have better examples, but surely that must have been a success. Why was he not making... It's interesting. I need to learn more about John Carpenter. I mean, the man made the thing, for fuck's sake. Mind you, that wasn't well received when it came out, was it? It was a bit of a, it was a bit of a critical success. Who are this? Who are those two guys in America who are famous for reviewing films? Roger Ebert and, and someone else. They seem to have shit canned every movie I love. It's like they, they. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like their opinions aren't worth much. I mean, not anymore. I think they're both dead, but you know what I mean. The Thing, Big Trouble in Little China, and They Live are masterpieces. Exactly. They really are. He would have insisted on doing his own music, even if he'd been given Star Wars. I would watch John Carpenter's Star Wars. I really would. Oh, man. Imagine that was the next the announcement of the next Star Wars movie. One made by David Lynch. One made by... Uh, uh, um, John Carpenter oh god if you could pick any director to make a Star Wars movie and Disney have to give them like a proper Star Wars budget who would you pick oh yes Del Toro mm, Guillermo Del Toro would be another excellent director even when he's doing his not so great movies his movies are great because apparently he has a rule where he does one for himself and one for the studios and like he does a Pacific Rim for the studios 
and then he'll make a shape of water for himself. Honestly, I don't think that's... He got an Oscar for that, but that's not what I would... I mean, Devil's Backbone and um, Pan's Labyrinth are both miles ahead of the shape of water, right? Uh, I, that was an okay movie. It was a pretty good movie, in fact, and it was an okay Del Toro movie, but, I mean, his other movies have been absolute masterworks. The Devil's Backbone is incredible. It's fantastic. Anything he does set during the sort of Spanish Civil War period is usually a, an absolute fucking humdinger. Kubrick, if we can exhume him and reanimate him. Uh, I reckon he'd be good. I, I, honestly, though, I feel like if you're making Kubrick make a Star Wars film, that's almost going too far and wasting your resurrection of Kubrick. If you can bring Kubrick back to life, just... Let him make his Holocaust movie that he was always wanting to make, or uh, something like that. Do you know, he spent years researching a ho um, the Holocaust, like, really bumming himself out, driving himself into an abject depression in order to make a movie about it. And then when Schindler's List came out, he just went, ah, fuck it, I'll do something else. I was like, wow, surely not. Come on, you can, there can be two Holocaust movies, right? It'll be a depressing year, but just make it. Come on. Dear, oh dear. Otherwise, Mel Brooks already made the best of the Star Wars franchise. Well, I see someone's a Spaceballs fan. Uh, I don't know. Mel Brooks, I can take him or leave him. He's all right. Lloyd Kaufman's Star Wars. I mean, that... I don't know if that necessarily has to be a joke. I would be interested to see Lloyd Kaufman's Star Wars. Imagine what he would end up... Do what would he spend that kind of money on? His films are made on such shoestring budgets that I feel like if you gave him that much money, things would end up going weird. You know, he's in Rocky. He's in the first Rocky movie. He's the homeless guy. Anyway, there you go. I've read Lloyd Kaufman's autobiography. I've read all of his filmmaking books. I really wanted to be a filmmaker at some point, but uh, I don't know why I never really pursued it. Oh, mainly because I started making music videos and realised I wasn't any good at it. <laughs> That's why. Hello, what does it mean? Welcome back. Uh, never noticed that you use a snowball mic. I use a raisin, a razor, si raisin, <laughs> raisin mic, California sun dried, a razor siren X. I literally got this because it was sort of like the cheapest mic that barely passes the threshold for good sound quality. So I kind of got the cheapest one I could. Other than that, I don't really know a whole lot about microphones, but I am kind of intrigued and kind of tempted to maybe splash out one day on a nice microphone and an arm to put it on. But the trouble with my setup is I have to move my PC and set it up every time I stream because everyone's upstairs asleep and I'm down here in the dining room. And um, I don't know, it just feels like if I had to actually set up the, the microphone arm and everything every time it would get knackered pretty quickly. It would break. He could make the remake of the moon landing. Ah, ah. Edgar Wright's Star Wars would be stylish as hell. Um, I think I don't know why, but part of me is saying don't don't give it to Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright's got other. Like, I don't know if I mean I think he would love Star Wars and he would give it a go, but I don't think it's his. I don't think it's his wheelhouse, right? I don't think it's... I don't know if Edgar Wright would be... Because I'm a performer now. Well, this is not really what you would call a high-performance stream, is it? Anyway, enough enough movie talk for a second. Uh, let's have a little look at what the humans have brought. Are we done? Are you going to stop bothering me with your nonsense? Guys? Guys! Okay, so back up to the surface. Let's see if my trade has been summoned. He hasn't. Why would I? Uh, why would I assume that? He's currently socialising, so it might take him a while to get there. Oh, oh! Look, they're building the traps, but all of the the serrated green glass discs have been whisked down into the trade depot. So they've got to go and, and grab them. Ah, this could cause problems. I don't have a large number of green glass discs to trade, so we have to rely on the mugs and other stuff, and the mugs are not valuable. Then again, we're not really desperate for buying stuff, are we? It's not like we can't afford shit, so... Um, and it's not like we're starving, it's not like we're running out of clothing or anything, so we really don't really need to trade. 
Although we might end up getting uh, getting some fun stuff. We'll see. He's still socialising. That's okay for now. Don't make me uh, get too upset though. Actually, Druid's Mead, before you spend money on microphones, try and get the best you can out of the microphone you have by using um, VST processing and stuff. If you... Uh, OBS has... Look up what VSTs are. Uh, they're a music thing. There's a lot of stuff about them, but you want the stuff for vo voice processing. Look up the Reaper plugins, and maybe if it doesn't sound great to you in OBS, look up the VST hosting software Cantable Light, and fiddle around, see what you can get out of the microphone you've got, because I think you'd be surprised how good you can make it sound. Although, if that turns out to be too much faffing around, maybe you want to get a snowball. It's not a bad microphone. I've been pleased with it, and it's lasted me God knows how long. Um, when did I buy this? Like years I've had this microphone. It's a good one. It's a good one. Uh, I looked, it looked like you had a bunch of dwarves with no clothes. I might have dwarves with no clothes. That's entirely possible. Maybe I should start actually doing what I said I was going to do and making clothing for them. Because that was one of the things I had uh, on my list. He's still socialising, isn't he? Little bastard. Right. You need to get yourself into Burrow 3. Stat. Where is he? Jazz hands. Oh, jazz hands. Where are you? Come on. There he is. Get in your Burrow. Do your trading. You know why you're here. You know what you're here for. Yeah, VSD Processing, Cantable Light, Reaper. If you don't worry about remembering it, if you forget anything, just ask in the Discord and I'm, I, can, I can tell you about it. I can send you the links and stuff to the websites. Yeah, the Cantable Light is um, uh, L-I-T-E rather than L-I-G-H-T. It's like a hosting software that you put the VSTs into and then you send your audio through like a chain of different processings. It's good. I mean, you'll get it sounding better, if not perfect. Maybe I need more cloth. Hmm. Well, we'll buy the cloth off them. We'll buy them, see what they've got. See what they've got. Nardy Night Righteous, sleep tight. Sweet dreams. Here we go. Right, we're trading. Oh, they have brought some of the shit clothing along. That's nice. We'll trade all that. I'll buy their bars for a start, although we may need to turn around and put those back on the shelf. There's a chance I don't have the cash for this, but we'll see. Don't need Galena blocks, don't need any crystal glass. Should I buy the clay? I've probably got storage space for it. We may as well. It's dirt cheap. It's dirt cheap, and maybe soon, sometime soon we'll start making pots and stuff. Uh, rope. Uh, water skins. We've got the Athrab, the Gesso, the Kashmez, the Ekro, the Nupto, the Omli, the Lugu, Azoka. I don't think we've seen Azoka before. Have we seen Azoka, Zoka, Zoka? Zoka, Zoka? I'll, I'll look at this one. I think this is a new one. We'll soon find out, though. <clears throat> this is a... Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. This is a well-crafted giant white stalk bone Zoka. The Zoka is a large, handheld, cylindrical bore bone wind instrument. The musician blows across a hole in the side. The musician selects the pitch by pressing the keys to stop holes. The instrument has a three and a half, has a three octave range, going from a very low to a middle pitch. At all pitches, the instrument has a round, vibrating timbre. Okay. It has three registers. Round. It has a round sound. Round. And vibrating. Round. Okay. Uh, the low register has a wobbling, fragile timber. Okay. So. Round and vibrating. Wobbling and fragile. Low register. Blown horn. Wobbling. Vibrating, fragile, and round. Hmm. 
Was it round? I'm not sure anybody has any right saying yes or no to that question. Uh, the idea of round music confuses me. Um, the middle register begins at low pitch and has a reedy, rugged, heavy timbre. So reedy, rugged and heavy, but round and vibrating as well. So reedy, but rugged and heavy. <sighs> Not particularly rugged or heavy, but I think that got reedy and vibrating, if not round. The high register begins at mid low pitch and has a raspy timber. <sighs> round, raspy, and vibrating. Round, raspy, vibrating and high. <laughs> hmm. I'm not sure. Oh man, we did it. Just as righteous left, he'll be so upset. Oh well, I think you were supposed to spin in a circle <laughs> to make it round. Hmm, hmm, maybe, maybe that's how it's done. Still, we'll buy the giant white stoke bone zoker because I feel like it's going to work as an instrument. What about, oh, excuse me, farty bomb? The sill. We've definitely seen the sill, haven't we? It's worth like almost a grand and a half. What's this one? This nuptoes were three grand. All right, we're looking at one more instrument and then, then we'll get on with it. This is an earthenware nupto. The frame is made from earthenware. The body is made from iron. The strings are made from still blue fabric. Excuse me. <clears throat> still as in motionless or still as in continues to be? <clears throat> The Nupto is a tiny, handheld, silk-stringed instrument with a ceramic frame and a metal body. The strings are suspended from the frame down to the body, and the musician plucks the six strings. Tuning is accomplished by pegs. Tuning is also possible using small levers. The instrument has a four-octave range, going from a middle to an extremely high pitch. At all pitches, the instrument has a thin, choppy, focused timber. It has two registers. The low register has a vibrating, harsh, nasal timber. So vibrating, harsh and nasal, but also thin, choppy and focused. Choppy, I'm going to, I'm, rather than going eh, I'm going to go eh, 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 There's my choppy sound. Focused, I don't know. Well, we'll ignore focused for now. Choppy, vibrating, harsh, and nasal. <laughs> it could be better. It could be a lot worse. <clears throat> the high register begins at high pitch and has a delicate, vibrating piercing timber. So vibrating, choppy, and delicate. So I need to do the chop with one hand, and then the vibrating with the other. This is going to be difficult. I'm not what you would call a natural drummer. <laughs> Rhythm is not my strong suit. Uh, so delicate, vibrating, and piercing. Uh, but thin and choppy. Let's get that vibration going. Uh, I'm going, I'm losing my mind. There we go. <laughs> We've done enough musical instruments for tonight. I know I've only done two, but you know, there's only so many times you can do each musical instrument in a particular world, isn't there? Or is there? I don't know. I don't know. 
so we've got water skins, we've got flasks, there's our cash mez, stalk bone soaker, glass gesso, iron ecro, etc, etc. Iron puzzle box, I will tear your soul apart. Um, a red winged blackbird, nope. A slug cage, Ugh. two humped camel cage, no. Billy goat cage, no, 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 no. Eagles, yes please, more eagle eggs. Horses, eagles and horses, the primary source of inspiration for most Mongolian throat singing, as far as I can tell. Uh, alpacas, cockatiels, yes please, I would like some cockatiel eggs. Oh shit. Oh fuck, I selected everything. What a wally! Hello, Mossy Griffin! Oh damn! Now who am I gonna raid? <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Thank you for raiding though, much appreciated. Oh man, I saw you were streaming earlier and went, ah, oh, somebody to raid at the end of the stream. Turns out you've stolen my thunder and beaten me to it. You absolute monster. How dare you? How dare you strut around here invading people, sharing your audience like some kind of magnanimous nice guy. Good Lord. The unbelievable audacity of it. But no, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us and thank you for bringing your little gang along. Lovely. What a lovely thing to do. Although we are now going to have to spend a few minutes at the end of the stream browsing through Twitch and figuring out who to raid. We may not even be able to raid someone playing Dwarf Fortress. Is anybody else playing Dwarf Fortress? Oh my god. <laughs> my clay, you've clipped There's My Choppy sound. Is that Was that that good? Was that the most amazing clip ever? I'll have to check it. I'll have to check it. Toadie needs to see this. Oh my god. I can only imagine... The thought of what he would think, seeing me do my <laughs> psychological breakdown musical impressions. Terrible stuff. Uh, hello, Tasty and the Cats. Welcome back. And hello, Dr. Phineas. Welcome back as well. And of course, Mossy Griffin. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's lovely of you to join us with a raid. Uh, oh, hello. Focus on the game, not on OBS. And then maybe pressing the arrow keys won't cause catastrophe, scoundrel. Right? Yeah? Good boy. Good boy. So, uh, we don't want the copper cage, we don't want the alpacas, we do want the cockatiel. So, get rid of the alpaca. Do we want this peregrine? No, it can't lay eggs, we don't need it. Guinea hen, sparrow. Oh, a guinea hen can lay eggs. Sod it, we've disabled it now. We don't want a disabled guinea hen. Worm cage, black bear. We have another black bear from the previous traders. I'm getting a. I, I don't know why I keep buying all these animals that don't lay eggs, because I've done this before. I remember my. F oh no, I really did select everything. Oh, fuck. Oh, sorry. Ah. Oh, anvils, we'll keep those. Nice. Anvils can be melted. Very good. Very useful. Uh, where were we? Worm meat? Mmm. Mmm, tasty. Uh, giant wolf kidneys, flying squirrel meat, wombat kidneys. Okay, we can keep the fish and the food. That'll be fine. Oh shit, they bought tons of food. Uh, thread. Do we need yarn and thread? Don't think we do. We can get rid of those. Uh, along with any of the clothing. We don't want dingo leather thongs. Uh, we've got so much cheese, I feel like buying more is an insult to our cheese industry. Let's uh, not do that. Oh, books. Meditations on the mountain home, a copper ladle, a silver wee warrow, blah blah, humble offering. Factual dingo man. I'm a factual dingo man. Let's have a look at what this one's about. This is a two-humped camel parchment scroll. The rollers are made from nice. Written on the item is an essay entitled Factual Dingo Man. It concerns... It concerns. The writing is forceful, yet it is somewhat self-indulgent. Overall, the prose is not awful, but not very good either. Well, as long as it's concerning, that's all I care. Uh, I don't want a llama wool pouch. Foundation of the Dwarves can go fuck itself. The truth about the dwarf sounds like it's probably some sort of racist screed. Uh, Stibnite Pestle. 
more competition. Oh, it's going to be one of those YouTubers, is it? Let's have a little look. This is a dog of Inutrug parchment scroll. The rollers are made from Kimberlite. Written on the item is an essay entitled More Competition, authored by Afi Fee Embrace Test. It concerns, it concerns a foot race held by the Bolt of Gripping in boarded rims as part of the celebration of paper in the late summer of 413. The writing indulges the author's every whim. Overall, the prose is great. I think we've seen this one before, haven't we? More competition has been brought before. Okay. Uh, do we need an iron boning knife? Is that the strap-on thing from Seven? Probably not. Probably not. It's like a flensing knife, but for bones instead of skin. What a stupid question, scoundrel. Why did you even say that? Let's look at this borax-bound codex. This object is adorned with hanging rings of well-crafted highwood. Written, the written portion consists of a one-page essay entitled Pathways to Blush Planks, authored by Afifi Embrace Test. It concerns the authoring of Putrescences, the Dirt Laughs, by the elf Afifi Embrace Test in Blush Planks in the early spring of 206. The writing indulges the author's every whim. Overall, the prose is masterful. Intriguing. I think last time we saw this book, we noted that blush planks sounds like a euphemism for a hard-on. Oh, madam, please. I've got a blush plank. Could you look the other way? My trousers are most distended. I don't know why it'd be said in the West Country accent. I keep I keep using that. I don't know why. Uh, this is a well-crafted talc-bound codex. The written portion consists of a 14-page essay entitled At One with the Dwarf. It concerns. The writing is fairly cheerful overall. The prose is passable. Oh, sorry, the writing is fairly cheerful. Overall, the prose is passable. Is that a comma or a full stop? Let's do a little zoom. It's a comma. Overall, the prose is passable. I thought that was a full stop there for some reason. Uh, okay, we're not on that. What about the mudstone? Mudstone codex? What have we got? Uh, the Explorations of the Market. Ah, nah, I don't want that. Uh, a Basalt Bound Codex. Oh, <clears throat> this is a Basalt Bound Codex. It is encrusted with briolette cut blue garnets. The written portion consists of a one-page essay entitled The Human, My Only Mistake, authored by San Tempted Crescents. It concerns the setting of the human... It's the settling of the human sand-tempted crescents in bank creams in 71. The writing has a very serious tone. Overall, the prose is not awful, but not very good either. I'm not buying it. I'm not interested in this autobiographical guff. Give me something interesting. Uh, an untitled letter. What? Hang on a minute, what was that? Oh, it says the writing tumbles out almost as a rant. I thought it said as a fart. And uh, I would not want to experience a fart that could be described to have tumbled from my buttocks. I mean, I prefer a little bit more directed force, you know? I like a guff to be a little bit more whoo, straight out. No going arse over tit. That's nonsense. Uh, first the tree, then the world. Ah, oh, that's elf bullshit. Not interesting. Limestone bound codex? No, oh, we've seen this one before. Naughtiness and the Closed Masters. It's a sexy book for sexy people, so we're going to put it in our sexy library. Oh, actually, I need to stop buying it there. Let's, un let's untrade all these ones here. There we go. <clears throat> oh, shit, I forgot. The rest of it's all done as well. Uh, is there anything interesting in the Tetrahedrite-bound codex? Uh, bah, 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 bah. No, not interesting. What about this one? Mudstone? No, elf bullshit. Uh, no. Oh, a skunk parchment sheet. Oh, I see. I thought they were just talking about Rizzlers for a second, but no, no, it's a parchment sheet made from the skin of a skunk. Makes sense when you think about it. Right, let's get rid of all these cabochons, opals, blah, blah, blah. I don't know any of this bullshit. No, this jewellery nonsense. Don't want any of that. We'll leave the clay in there. Excuse me. Do we have any uh, cloth bins? Because people were saying I might need more cloth. That might be the case. 
go. Get rid of all that. Good. So how much trade value are we after now? Uh, 8,024. Well, I'm pretty confident we can meet that. Pretty confident we're not going to have any trouble finding eight grand's worth of bullshit knocking around. Especially with a couple of spiked copper balls here. Look at that. Almost a grand and a half a pop. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to sell the weapon bin. There's, oh my god, a three grand salated green... Salated? A salacious green glass disc. A salacious crumb. Uh, chestnut bin, glass goblets. Okay, they're going into profit. We'll give them a shitload of goblets. Maybe a cup, few grand's worth. There we go. And then we trade. Are you sure you want to trade the selected goods? I am, sir. Hey, Ilum seems ecstatic with the trading. Good, good. I'm glad he's entered into a state of ecstasy. Actual, unbeatable pleasure. Mm, lovely. Uh, right, let's get rid of the trader at the depot. We don't need them. And also, we should probably remove them from the burrow, because otherwise they'll just hang out there for days and days, like they did before. Where are you? Where are you, jazz hands? Reveal your little self. There we go. All right, now the trading's done. I can uh, go back down here, have a little look at what's going on in the clothes zone, and take a little peeky poo at chat. I just zoned back in on the stream to strap on thing. Yeah, for some reason I remembered seven when I saw the phrase boning knife. Very rude. Very rude indeed. <laughs> the lack of what it concerns is concerned. They are very concerning. A lot of that stuff, very concerning indeed. 302 pages of sexy times. I know, right? I mean, like I'm going to get past page 10. Make it a pamphlet, for fuck's sake. Um, what if the first, the tree, then the world is about conquering the elves? <gasps> Alceris, I never thought of that. You're right. It could actually be the exact opposite of what I thought. Hmm. Hmm. True, Bahantome. I could look at their library records, and that would make another seven reference as well. The Lusty Argonian Maid. Oh my goodness. Now there's a reference. <laughs> Screenplay version of Avatar. Nice. The salacious discs are the deadliest. I know, right? They absolutely uh, they tell such tattletale stories. How rude. How rude. Foss, foss, foss. Fossy, fossy, fossy. I'm not sure which pronunciation was correct, but I tried. I gave it my best shot, Weirus. I really did. Okay, so uh, the clothing industry. Let's take a look at our stocks, shall we? Because now is the time for a little bit of thought about what's going on. Now we have tons of ammunition, even though I don't really have... Oh, this is all... With... Oh, crap. It's counting all the shit from the... Uh, from the traders, isn't it? Oh, tits. We've got 14 steel bars, so even if we can't start making our own steel, we do have enough to give it a little bit of dupage. So we can have steel if we want it, but I've kind of got my sights set on a bit of adamantine. So maybe we should be thinking about that more? Uh, where's my cloth listings? We are not out of cloth. Holy cow. We've got quite a bit of sheep wool cloth, actually. Tons of the stuff. Not so much silk, but plenty of wool. It's all good. Uh, what else are we looking for? We've got 14 books. 78 corpses. It says 101 here, whatever. Um, crowns, crutches, cut gems, doors, drinks. Anything else I need to check the stocks of? Hmm, got more floodgates than we should have. Lots of footwear. Lots of forbidden footwear. Mm, kinky boots. Uh, globs. We've got 174 globs. Sheep tallow and alpaca tallow in plentiful supply. We shouldn't have worries about soap. Uh, handwear. Tons and tons of gloves. Just so many fucking gloves. Look at this. Forbidden and dumped cave spider silk gloves. 25. How have we ended up with so many fucking gloves? Why do we? Why would we ever need this many gloves? Is that a primary? Is that like the equivalent of underpants for dwarves? 
I can't go out there, I've got no gloves on. Everyone will see my fingers. They'll think I'm a disgusting pervert. Um, Lynn body casts, liquids, 18 stored water, 10 mog juice. I wonder if that was extracted with the permission of Meg. Uh, 10 rattlesnake venom and 40 giant rattlesnake venom. Presumably they just get more out of a giant rattlesnake, right? Uh, Daggeramba's wolf extract. Okay, <laughs> lovely bit of wolf extract. Mmm, nice. Uh, hand of night extract. We've all been there, right, lads? Oh, dear. Uh, pig's milk. Mmm. And some golden salve. Interesting. Uh, logs. Meat mechanisms. We've got a lot of meat. Oh, my God. Uh, I think it's mainly meat we bought. And then, of course, uh, this final page. Got some powders. Good. Got some gypsum plaster. That's nice. Raw fish. Good. Remains. Crow remains. Damselfly remains. Mantis remains. Dragonfly remains. Rat remains. And two different types of hamster remains. Nice. Very nice. Um, the second Bob Fosse was famous for jazz hands. For I nearly nearly misread that as jizz hands because of Sal's laughing at Hand of Night extract. Deary dear. No, Bob Foss. Bob Ross is the happy little notes man. <laughs> Bob Foss is someone else. Um, <laughs> jizz hands! Um, where were we? Ooh, let's see. Uh, thrones, tools, totems... Toys, traction benches, trap components. How many spiked balls have we got and how many blades have we got? 98 serrated green glass discs. Holy shit. That's a lot of discs. We don't have many spikes. I don't know how we've ended up with any of them, to be honest. I didn't make any. Oh, hang on. We're seeing all of the traders' stuff, aren't we? I keep forgetting that. Duh. Duh. Windows. No copies of Windows. I mean, what computer would you run it on? This is Dwarf Fortress, not PC World. Terrible jokes. I think I might be flagging. Well, I, I, that makes sense. It's almost quarter to three in the morning, so it makes sense for me to be losing a little bit of my mojo, a little bit of my uh, ability to even talk. You've got to beat the devil out of it. That's right. Beat the uh, devil out of it with your hand of night, and uh, you'll get some extract, which will allow you to do jizz hands. It's good. Nice. Uh, <laughs> what a happy little accident. What am I talking about? This is terrible. Why have I suddenly gone off on a weird masturbatory tangent? This is unnecessary. It's probably terms of service breaking as well. Oh well, never mind. At least I got banned for something fun, eh? Oh well. Mm. There we go. No worries, Claycree. I'm not going to be going on much, lo uh, much longer, to be honest. I'm going to be stopping soon. In fact, I'm going to pick up my phone here and have a little look to see if there's anyone else playing Dwarf Fortress. Because otherwise, we're going to have a hard time picking somebody to... Uh... There's got to be someone else, right? There's 37 people watching. Yeah, there's two other people. It's good. Ms. 404 Not Found and Greenwood Forge. We can think about who to raid uh, in a minute. I'll, I'll put those two options on the table. Turn my phone off for a sec. And then we'll just try and uh, maybe push on to uh, get that clothing system set up that I was talking about after I've checked my new bridge. Nobody's built the lever yet. Okay, that's fine. The traps aren't quite being built as fast as I'd like. That's okay, we can survive that as well. Let's come up here, check to see if the dumping stuff has gone. Okay, we can dump all the rhyolite in that stockpile in a second. That's fine, we won't do it right now. And then we'll come up here and start setting up some clothes stockpiles that will only take... Excuse me, from the clothes makers workshops so nobody will put their scabby old socks in there. Because we don't want scabby old socks. No, no, no. We want lovely, fresh, clean, brand new socks. Because, you know, if you've got a sock full of scabs, it's obviously second hand, right? Or they're your scabs. 
In which case, empty your fucking socks out, lad. Come on. <laughs> Don't be a monster. Don't be a monster. Um, hello, Brian the IT guy. Brian B the IT guy. Sorry. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the stream or back. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, Righty Ho says, joins me. Good night all. Thanks for the stream. Great instruments. Oh, thank you very much. I'm sure we'll do more instruments next time. Just this evening, I wasn't quite ready for it. New. Oh, you've come in at like the tail end of a stream, but that's okay. It's nice. Sometimes you only want to see the ass end and you don't want to get the whole thing. Otherwise, you'll just end up feeling sick and overfed. It's not what you want, is it? That's not what you want at all. Uh, anyway, we're trying to sort out some of the issues I've got with my clothing industry. Previously, I set up some stockpiles here and people just put all their old crappy clothes in there. So what I'm going to do is, this is chaos as well. I think I might floor this over because honestly, do, do we need all these plants? I don't think we do, do we? I could put a plant collection go zone in, couldn't I? I could put a gathering zone in and then we wouldn't have to worry about people going up to the surface to get some of this crap. Uh, I don't know. I'll tell you what, let's start by putting in some clothing stockpiles. Now, clothing, I believe, comes under finished goods. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Actually, you know what? I'm going to go totally... Whereas I was doing segregated stockpiles before, this time I'm just going to go crazy. Bang! There's a big old finished goods stockpile. What are you going to do with that scoundrel? Let me tell you. I'm going to disable bins. I'm going to go in and I'm also going to say I want none of these types. No stone, no metal, no gem. Uh, and then we come over here and we look for armour, footwear, headwear, handwear, uh, legwear. That should do it, shouldn't it? Maybe put backpacks in there as well. I could make a separate stockpile for backpacks, right? There we go. And that should end up with all clothes. However, what I will also say is take from a pile slash workshop T. So take from this one and also take from this one. There we go. So we should end up with easy peasy lemon squeezy stockpiles without nonsense that said there's already a load of shitty clothes in there so maybe i need to set these to be a trade depot that like auto trade and then when the traders turn up they'll whip everything up there and i can just sell the shit stuff maybe will that work hmm. uh, a gathering zone would work and stockpiles prevent them growing back hmm. I suppose it does make it slightly more uh, useful, doesn't it? Doesn't mean just getting rid of everything, doesn't it? Following the raids from Blind. Oh, was Blind playing? I didn't see Blind playing. Is he playing Dwarf Fortress? He's probably not, though, is he? How about squishing the Tantrum guy for a finisher? Now, that is quite a finisher. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's go up to our squishing zone. Take me to the squishing zone. The kill zone, if you will. Uh, and who is Tantrum Guy? We've got to find him first, haven't we? Um, is there a notification here I can find? No? I don't see him. No, I don't see them. Let's try in here. How do I spot my tantrum, lad? Uh, I can do a search, can't I? Q T A N T. Huh. He stopped tantruming. Presumably, it's the least happy dwarf in the fortress, right? Which would be if we go over to Dwarf Therapist, our least happy lad is. Sort by happiness. Come down to the bottom. Dingo Dong. Oh, that was it. Dingo Dong the Moody Boy. Okay. Dingo Dong, Dingo Dong. He keeps fighting people. He won't last long. So, down we go. We'll find Dingo Dong. We'll do it with a search. Dingo. There he is. Dingo Dong. Now demanded in the zone. We could also go to the military screen, put him in the Oka Locks. 
Where are you, Dingo Dong? Q D I N G O D I N G O D I N G O D I N G O and Dingo Dong's his name. Oh, um, let's move that guy. Oh, we've already got them stationed up there. He should go straight away. He should go straight away. Man, some people they like. Oh, they, you, you say to them, "Do you want to join a death squad?" And they'll be like, "Um, do I have to?" I suppose I will if I have to. And I'd be like, yeah, you have to. And then they get led up here to where there's this little room with a drawbridge at one end. They're like, so who am I killing? And you'll be like, ah, actually, Mr. Dingo Dong, I think you've misinterpreted what I mean. When I say death squad, I mean a squad that is going to experience death. And then Dingo Dong, of course, starts weeping and crying and begging for clemency. And I'll say something along the lines of, Nope. <laughs> Just squash him. Come on, Dingo Dong. Get yourself in the special room. We need to give you, like, proper top-tier psychiatric treatment here. When dwarves get depressed, there is one surefire method of relieving their sadness. And it involves enormous quantities of heavy stone dropping on their heads. Come on, Dingo Dong. Where have you gone? Let's find him. Let's see if we can follow him to his execution spot. Uh, dingo dong, dingo 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 dong, Q D I N G, there he is. Uh, if I say Z and then F for follow, should result in. Oh, look at him sitting there in the bloody stockpile, having a bit of a funk. What are you doing? Depressed, are you? Depressed? Don't make me send the military after you. Everyone will get horribly upset. If we start beating the mentally ill to death in front of our citizens, it's all going to go horribly wrong almost immediately. Oh, hello. He's on the move. He's on the hoof. Let's see if we can get him to go to the correct place. Come on. If you get squished in there, no one will even know you died and we'll be able to get a nice little memorial slab made up for you and no ghosts. It's going to be good. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a massive relief off your shoulders. Although also it's going to be a, a dwarven sacrifice. There we go. He's in his spot, which means let's just quickly secure these doors so that nobody accidentally wanders in and joins him in Splatland. Come down here, find the lever. It's not there, is it? It's uh, there. Is that the right one? That is the correct lever. OK, let's add pull now head up to the surface and now we watch as our troubled young man is obliterated for the well i was going to say crime for the not actually a crime of being a bit sad never mind never mind come on somebody pull the lever there we go bye bye dingo dong bosh and that's a pause in fact let's not make it a pause just yet let's actually uh go and set that memorial slab being made otherwise there will be ghosts and it will be a problem the last thing we need is g -g -g ghosts knocking around g -g -g ghosts cause no end of trouble they fight people they scare people they're real assholes uh bomb wreck oh wait they're not even dingo dong isn't even on the list what's this I can memorialise stray cats, but Dingo Dong, nobody gives a f I'm sorry, Dingo Dong, I thought at least one dwarf in this fortress would give at least half a fuck about you, but apparently not. Nobody gives even the slightest shard of shit about you. Hmm. Let's try one more time. Add. Alt S. Maybe it's had time to, uh, to happen. Tick over. Put Dingo Dong on the list. No. Wow. He must have really had some serious tantrums if he's that ill-liked. Good grief. Well, that's that. Lovely. Don't forget to reset the lever. Oh, yes, that is a good point. Maybe I should. We'll leave it for now. It'll be fine. Oh, sorry for keeping you up, Righteous. I'll try my hardest. I was quite pleased with the Dwarf Therapist uh, redemption thing. I love that. 
I love the fact that the chat doesn't have to wait for me to realise I've left you in Dwarf Therapist. You can just take matters into your own hand. I've also been working on a lot of um, like these kind of um, little racist ghosts. There he is, H.P. Lovecraft, coming to check out what's going on. Disgusted by our inclusive ways. And there's old oily boy Conan himself having a little look at what's going on. I've been trying to set a lot of those up for like the subs and stuff so people can have some like fun things to do but uh coming up with the ideas is is not ideal. Uh I've got a, I've got a few ideas but uh, we'll see where they go. We'll see where they go. Maybe they don't know he's missing. That's a very good point. They might not have had time to figure out what's happening. Hmm. 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 Yes. Anywho, um, those of you watching the recording on YouTube, thank you very much for doing so. It's been a pleasure recording for you, but now you must fuck off, because I've finished. Bye-bye. <laughs>